Welcome to Alabama International Motor Speedway, Talladega, the world's fastest race course. Benny Parsons has set an all-time record qualifying here at over 200 miles an hour. And Larry Newmer, it was a long time in coming. L.W. Wright, the mystery man that stumps any racing fan who dares to dive into this now 40-year chase for the truth. A man that pulled off possibly one of the most impressive scams in not just NASCAR, but in all of racing. And after years of research and no good leads, 39 years later, in 2021, I may have finally found the answer to L.W. Wright. April 1982, the NASCAR Winston Cup Series circuit is well into its season with the annual event at Talladega Super Speedway, the Winston 500. A stir of rumors is bubbling in the Nashville area as Hendersonville native William Dunaway approaches the local paper to promote a new driver ready to debut at the upcoming Talladega weekend. The driver's name is L.W. Wright, a 33-year-old Bush Grand National driver who claimed he had about a season's worth of experience in the lower division. He was prepared to make his cup debut. And in the press release put forth by Dunaway, he claimed that Wright had support from country music stars Merle Haggard and T.G. Shepard. As the press release was prepped and posted, L.W. Wright himself approached investor B.W. Bernie Terrell, head of Space Age Marketing, for funding of his new team. Wright persuaded Terrell and was able to acquire on the spot $30,000 in cash directly from the agency along with another $7,500 to cover various expenses with the vehicle. After acquiring nearly $40,000, L.W. Wright then approached a young Sterling Marlin, who at the time was still trying to get his young cup career off the ground. Wright offered him $17,000 in cash on the spot and a $3,700 check for an old Chevrolet Monte Carlo. Marlin accepted the $17,000 up front and agreed to the check that Wright would send later on. But Marlon was suspicious of Wright, and decided to come to the track, curious of the large spending his new client was doing. After the car was acquired, Wright went to NASCAR, and convinced them of his ability to drive a race car. He wrote them a check for the cost of a license, and they begrudgingly let him on the track, unsure of his abilities in a race car. The spending didn't stop here. At the track, Wright wrote a $1,500 check to Goodyear, and another $1,200 check to Travis Tiller for various parts to keep the team running over the weekend. Wright even went as far as buying team jackets from the Southern Textile Association for $168. Wright got ready to do another newspaper interview to again promote his new team. Right before the interview, however, T.G. Shepard and Merle Haggard announced that they had nothing to do with L.W. Wright and that they'd never have heard of him before, before this incident. Wright in the interview was asked about this conundrum, and Wright stated that he may have been a little too preemptive on the sponsorship with the Stars and states that it's still in the works and hopefully will be done soon. The interviewer had also done some research and could not find past information about Wright's previous claim to 43 Grand National starts. He again states that he misspoke and that he meant sportsman division races and not Grand National starts. Marlon, meanwhile, had noticed that Wright had noticeably been clueless about basic information pertaining to racing. The next day, L.W. Wright went on track for practice and crashed the Chevrolet, destroying the front end of the car requiring repairs. They repaired the car, and on Sunday, Wright rolled off 36th, and after 13 laps, the engine lets go, and Wright DNFs. Now the story goes that after this, Wright immediately fled the track, leaving behind everything, and was never heard from again. It has been later found, though, that Wright did in fact appear on the Nashville Cup entry list, but later withdrew, probably due to his lack of existence. This is where the story usually ends for most, a dead end. All the checks bounced, he never paid back the money, private eyes were hired, and nobody found anything. This is the point where L.W. Wright becomes the mystery man that no one can seem to track. 
and for over six months off and on, I have tried my best to find any information on who L.W. Wright could have been, scouring the internet for evidence. For months, I found nothing. Finally, one night, after watching yet another telling of the story, I again went to the comment section to see what people's thoughts were on the incident. Most things weren't out of the ordinary, and the paralysis through thoughts and arguments seemed to be nothing more than a waste of time. But then, I found something. The comment, I know who he is, may at first be chalked up to nothing more than somebody bragging, trying to get attention. But nonetheless, I was interested in the replies. Are you able to share? Yes, he's still living in Richlands. Well, the statute of limitations is long past for any wrongs. We're all curious to know more. Well, he's on the run for more criminal activity again. He had went back home and got in trouble again for another con. His real name is Larry Wright. Just uses his deceased brother's middle initial, W. He has spent some time in prison for other cons unrelated to NASCAR. One of his brothers was on the crew. He's always been a smooth operator. My grandma proudly hung his picture next to the car in her living room. What is not a well-known fact about L.W. Wright's case that was dug up later when the police and private investigators started looking for him was an unpaid long-distance phone call that was made from Tennessee all the way to the town of Richlands, Virginia. It was a call to Wright's mother, who was living back in his hometown during the race. I soon began researching for a man named Larry Wright in the area of Richlands, Virginia, and then I found something else. In the March 6, 1991 edition of the Lebanon News newspaper, an obituary had been posted in the previous week. Alta S. Wright of Pound, Virginia, age 85, had passed. Left behind were six children, one daughter and five sons. Her fourth oldest son was Larry Wright. Now, Alta was 85 when she passed in 1991, making her birth date sometime around 1905 or 1906. L.W. Wright claimed to be 33 years old at the time of his excursion in the NASCAR. This also means that Mrs. Alta Wright would have been roughly 76 at the time Larry would have supposedly called her. Maybe Larry, or L.W., wasn't precisely 33 years old. Let's say he was roughly 30 to 35 years old. He certainly looks that age in the photo of him from the newspaper that's been found more recently. That means Alta was roughly 38 to 43 years old when she had Larry. And I'm fairly certain that this man in the obituary is L.W. Wright. The ages add up, the birth years add up, and even though I can't confirm the brother's middle initial claim from the comments, this Larry Wright did have four other brothers, adding to the possibility that this may in fact be him. But now comes the foggy part, his criminal past. If Larry had been convicted and sentenced to prison, it is more than likely that there is a record of his conviction. The first thing I looked for was criminal records and prosecutions for people named Larry Wright. And the first piece of evidence I found was this. The State of Tennessee versus Larry Elmer Wright. Stated in the document on August 27, 1980. The Rich family had left their home and locked the doors. They came home later to observe the remnants of what appeared to be a break-in. In the home, several items were missing, including a gold watch, jewelry, a collection of $2 bills, and the most notable, a missing 22 caliber pistol. Two weeks later, a detective met with Larry Wright and noted that Wright admitted to him he had done the burglary, and that he had hid the items in the woods and the handgun in a field. He took the detective to the items where they were found. However, the handgun apparently had gone missing shortly after he had put it there. Wright was found guilty in the second degree of burglary, he was found that he must spend at least three years in state penitentiary for his crimes. Also in the document, it lists another burglary that he committed in 1979. This all happened in 1980, and this document is of Wright's appealing of the punishment of three to ten years in prison. The appeals, however, took place on February 4th, 1983. The one thing that could shoot a huge hole in this being our L.W. Wright is if he was in custody already by May of 1982. However, a 
appeals cases take place on average six months after the original trial, according to the DOJ. So with that fact, let's go through the thought process of what may have happened. Larry Wright commits these crimes. He plays the system in a way that the court will not hear his case and take him into custody for quite some time. He's put on parole. Finally, the court date is set. It is June of 1982. Wright knows that his court date's coming up, and he's expecting to be found guilty. So he comes up with a brilliant idea. Right before going to prison, why not try and run a NASCAR cup race? He pulls off NASCAR's biggest scam, then goes to court about a roughly a month later or two, and is found guilty and goes to prison for three to ten years. He is never caught by anybody for what he did in NASCAR, because nobody would suspect a prisoner to do something like this. No one would ever think to check for someone like him. He used a false name, so they would have to go swap L.W. Wright to Larry Wright. Why look in the penitentiary? More than likely, the person fled. He was on the run somewhere, not in prison. But this all rides on the assurance that Larry Elmer Wright was not in custody before 1982. There were some other minor cases that I found involving a man named Larry Wright. But the only other one I could find was a minor lawsuit against a Larry Wright in 1985 for a breach of contract regarding the sale of a house. This very well could be our L.W. Wright as well, but that would mean the Larry Elmer Wright theory falls through, as he would have been in prison during the lawsuit. There are various other people named Larry Wright that have committed crimes or have records, but none match up more than these two theories. Mystery is something that fascinates every human. The idea of wanting to know the unknown, understand the stories of a cryptic past, and uncover a con man's lies. We may never definitively know who L.W. Wright was. Was he Larry? Was he a drug kingpin? A thrill seeker? Or perhaps someone we may never know? L.W. Wright could be watching this video right now. 14,452 days after his con, knowing he for yet another 24 hour cycle has pulled the wool over everyone's eyes.